Today we're revealing the possible medical reasons behind some unusual behaviors. Take a look at this. My son Sammy was a perfectly happy, healthy, normal child. <laughs> Just after Sammy turned 12 years old, he started showing strange behaviors. The first thing I noticed was that he would close his eyes and put his hands out, feeling his way as if he were blind. Then every single day there was a new behavior. He would pace. He would step over and duck under invisible walls. He would slither along the side of a wall. He was in a totally separate world. If there wasn't anything about him that even resembled my son. One day, his tutor handed me a piece of paper. She said, he, I couldn't get him to talk, but he wrote this. And I unrolled the paper, and all it said was help. Then I started to get really concerned. I took him to see a psychiatrist, who immediately diagnosed him with obsessive compulsive disorder. He prescribed medication. His behaviors consistently worse. My mom called and asked, have you had him tested for strep? He had never even had a sore throat. We ran the test, and it came back positive for strep. He was diagnosed with PANDAS. PANDAS is rheumatic fever of the brain. We then tried a series of other antibiotics, and within a couple weeks, he improved dramatically. Now he's doing incredibly well. I often wonder where Sammy would be today if we had not discovered this. I could have lost my son. Well, Beth is here, and guess what? Little Sammy is all grown up. He's here with us today. Thank you for joining us. And I'm so intrigued to hear more about your story because so few people have heard of pandas. Dr. Shears is going to explain it to us. Well, first off, pandas stands for Pediatric Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorder Associated with Strep Infection. The National Institute of Mental Health actually has done a lot of study, and they think why this happens is similar, like you said in the video, it's rheumatic fever of the brain. And what happens when bacteria invades your body, your body produces antibodies to fight it. That's a normal response. Now, strep is actually a pretty vicious bacteria, and those antibodies can be pretty strong. And if they, instead of attacking the bacteria, attack a healthy tissue, you get problems. If it attacks the heart, you get rheumatic fever. If it attacks the kidneys, you get nephritis. And if those strep antibodies attack the brain, like what happened in Sammy's case, you get pandas. And then the part of the brain that it attacks is called the basal ganglia. And that part of the brain is involved with movement and behavior. So if you damage that part of the brain, you're going get, to get either obsessive compulsive properties, or maybe, or if it's the movement part of the uh, basal ganglia, more of a Tourette's type of problem. And it's interesting because the bacteria itself, mm -hmm. the thought is, isn't causing the problem. No. It's the well, patient's immune system, antibodies. Right. their yeah. antibodies mm -hmm. are attacking their own brain. Right. And it's just... And, and it's, it's, it's fascinating. And this is a fairly new uh, disorder that we've recognized, and, and, uh, and, and we're still trying to figure out exactly how it works. But we do know, um, like when somebody gets a strep throat infection, it's usually no big deal, and we treat it with antibiotics. But uh, sometimes, if, you, if, it's, if the treatment isn't finished, Especially, you know, you, you're, you feel better after two or three days, you stop the antibiotics, those antibodies still circulate, and that's what, what, what we know can cause rheumatic fever, and we think maybe is why PANDAS happens also. Take home here for people at home is, we actually give you antibiotics when you're diagnosed with strep throat, not so much to cure the strep throat as mm -hmm. to prevent things like rheumatic yep. you got disease. Rheumatic so. fever. You need to finish that full course. Now, Sammy, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Um, That's awesome. I don't have, you know, any symptoms left. I'm in college now. It's good times. And someone I know who you hold dear to your heart, we actually have the pediatrician who cured Sammy of pandas. Join us via Polycom. Say hello to Dr. Catherine Nicolaitis. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about recognizing the symptoms and then how you put two and two together. What's important here is to make the connection between a preceding strep infection, as in Sammy's case, that connection wasn't made initially. And when you see this abrupt overnight onset of symptoms, think about the possibility of a preceding strep infection and having a culture in obtaining treatment as soon as possible. 
Thank you so much, Dr. Nicolaitis. We appreciate it. Sammy, it's so good to see you doing well.